According to several bodies of research done by real psychologists, metal fans on average tend to have higher IQs than fans of other genres of music. Oh, if only those people would show up to my studio! So in this episode, let's see how you can apply that big ass brain power to something other than scoring weed and being late for band rehearsal, and instead find ways that you can think for yourself and maybe create some original and exciting music for once in your life. Number one, know your history. Now there's a famous quote that states, those who do not learn from the mistakes of history are doomed to repeat them. And boy, oh boy, previous decades are littered with some pretty amazing examples of how not thinking for themselves led to bands being both dull and all original. Now, the arguments about exactly which bands started metal are legion, but for reasons of brevity, let's say that in the early 70s, Black Sabbath created an epic heavy sound which influenced countless other bands and helped to kick off what we know as metal today. Now, another seminal band from the West Midlands, Judas Priest, were energized by what Sabbath had started and in turn helped to influence what became the new wave of British heavy metal. And once bands like Iron Maiden, Saxon, and Def Leppard took off, metal music had gained enough momentum that it hasn't really ever stopped since. Now the key word here is influenced. The bands that succeeded took music that they liked and used it for inspiration to create their own new sounds. However, for every Iron Maiden, there were countless wannabes and soundalikes who have been consigned to the dust heap of history. Why? Because slavishly copying and repeating other ideas leads to unoriginality and obscurity. Number two, don't follow fashion. Once the heyday of studs and leather had passed, a more glamorous look crept into metal and soon big hair, lipstick, and neon colored guitars had replaced the harder edged feel of the 70s. The bandwagon that was hair metal had rolled into town and many musicians couldn't wait to jump on. With a few notable exceptions, lyrics got increasingly vapid and shallow, and the birth of MTV spawned bands that were all about the look, and Pretty Boys ruled mainstream metal. Of course, the party couldn't last, and as the movie The Decline of Western Civilization Part II, The Metal Years, documents, a scene built on decadence and overindulgence with a focus on how you look, not what you're playing, can't be sustained. They did get laid, though. A lot. The lesson here is that record labels took hold of a shift in musical taste at the dawn of the music video age and created a freight train based on the most important thing in the music industry, money. Even the best bands from that period of big hair and higher heels are now reduced to the nostalgia festival circuit trapped in a time bubble and haven't created any new music worth listening to in decades. Also, time and gravity are not kind to those that favor style over substance. Number three, your stupid band name and logo. That's enough history for now, but speaking of style over substance, let's address the elephants in the room. Your band name and logo. Most musicians have a very narrow window of opportunity to rise above the herd before they disappear forever. One shining moment to be noticed, especially tough now that social media means you're essentially competing in a worldwide battle of the bands. This is your opportunity to be unique, to have an impact, to carve your band's name in history. So before you decide to inflict your band rotting flesh nozzles from Venus on the universe, take a moment to consider the name you choose. Also handy hint, this is not a fucking font. Number four, sources of inspiration. At its best, metal music can be exciting, passionate, energizing, and honestly, just a fucking joy to listen to. At its worst, it's derivative, reductive, boring, and just plain irritating. In an age of unprecedented access to information, there is no excuse for not seeking out new sources of inspiration. History, philosophy, science fiction, movies, other genres of music. We'll come back to genres later. These are just a few areas that the greatest bands and songwriters have used to spark their imagination. If your only source of musical inspiration is another band's music, that is inevitably what your music will resemble. So if you want to just sound like a Norwegian black metal band from mid-October 1992, then have at it. But don't expect to be accused of originality anytime soon. Hell, you could even try reading a book for once in your life. Encourage your drummer to learn how to read. Or give your bass player a new coloring book. Just keep an eye on them so they don't eat the fucking crayons again. Seriously, bass players, these are not snacks. Number five, be different. Duh. 
As a parallel to the 80s hair metal scene, the thrash metal movement developed at roughly the same time. Now, don't forget that bands in both those camps at the time had a lot of musical influences in common, but they went in drastically different directions with it. Drawing from the same pool created these guys and these guys. Number six, you can change. One of the most dramatic transformations of a metal band is, of course, Pantera. They went from being a glam metal band and be a one with an amazing guitarist with songs like Ride My Rocket and Tell Me You Want It to being the powerhouse that gave us Cowboys From Hell and fucking Hostile. If they hadn't changed, there's a good chance they would have faded into obscurity. Instead, they became a pivotal band with an enormous impact on metal. Not only were they a massive influence for countless other musicians, they were one of the bands that helped keep metal going during the 90s when even some of the biggest acts were struggling as grunge held sway. Not only did they reinvent themselves, they doubled down on their new direction, rejecting a more commercial approach that many of their peers surrendered to. If Pantera can change from this to this and sell 20 million records, why the hell can't you? Number seven, use your creative freedom. As I mentioned earlier, the hair metal genre was driven into overdrive by record labels who saturated the market in an effort to maximize profit. The same can be said for grunge, new metal. In fact, pretty much every wave in the past eventually fell prey to marketing only to be swept aside in favor of the next big thing. However, today the music scene is very different after a seismic shift away from the traditional models of record labels, promoters, and studios. With all the improvements in technology, there are so many less barriers to creating amazing music in your home studios, basements, garages, or rehearsal spaces. Instead of just rough demos, self-recording and self-producing bands and musicians can create outside the confines of a traditional label that dictates what you can and can't produce. And what do you guys do with that total creative freedom? Drone and Endlessly on the bottom string of your eight string headless guitar to a click track, of course. Number eight, avoid gear slavery. If you spend all your time worrying about what gear you're playing on rather than the music you're playing, remember that music equipment companies rely on the fact that musicians have access to credit and often have very poor impulse control. Thinking independently of gear, treating them as tools, and focusing on stronger writing pays dividends. Gear comes and goes, but good songwriting and musicianship will stand the test of time. Number nine, are you a walking cliche? Sex, drugs, and rock and roll may make for interesting biographies, assuming you live long enough to actually have one. There's no judgment on lifestyle choices here, but if you choose hedonism and indulgence because you think you're supposed to, or because you think it's cool, then congratulations, you're already well on the way to becoming a parody of yourself. Number 10, are you trapped by a genre? There are countless genres and subgenres of metal, and categorizing those genres correctly is the source of endless rage in the mouth-breathing online echo chambers of forums across the globe. Thinking outside of labels and genres gives you creative freedom. Rather than worrying about whether your latest creation is sludge doom math jazz core, rather than math grind sludge core is ridiculous redundant and better left to other lesser beings. Look guys, there's only two kinds of music. Music you like and music you don't. 11, art or product? Now this one is a hard question that a band with any measure of success has to answer at some point. Art won't always pay the bills, but probably won't leave an aftertaste like sour milk laced with motor oil. Just ask the guy who wrote Cherry Pie about that one. Oh wait, he's dead. You have the freedom to decide since the closest thing you have to a manager probably your mom, so choose wisely. Number 12, write actual songs. I don't know how many times this can be applied over so many different topics, but it's a major key to originality and creativity. See what I did there? You'll have to explain to your bass player what a key is later. Write actual songs, guys, with structure and intent. Stitching together a riff salad is a terrible way to write music because ultimately it's lazy thinking and does nothing but expose a lack of intent. Showboating your 400 note a minute playing without an ounce of creativity sounds like a musical typewriter. Now that's not to say playing fast can't be creative. It's not how many notes you play, it's whether you mean them that matters. Now the final key to thinking for yourself in metal is of course to never forget that you are all individuals. Yes! No, you're missing the point. You are all different. Yes, we're all different. Uh, oh. 
straight. Ah, fuck. 